Well, hello. It is September 15th, 2021, and this is Thoughts from the Word. Well, hello, and welcome back to Thoughts from the Word. Today we're going to look at a passage, a familiar passage out of John, John chapter 21. This is uh, the beginning of the discussion Jesus has with Peter, where he's uh, giving Peter restoration. After Peter had denied him three times, he's then asked uh, about his love for Christ three times, and then closing with Jesus telling him to feed his sheep and then to understand what ultimately is going to happen to him, his how his life will be and the kind of death he was to to receive in order to glorify God. And he finishes up by simply saying to him, follow me. But I want to look at the beginning verse of this passage, verse 15, and touch on that for just a moment. So turn in your Bibles, if you will, to twenty-one, John 21, 15, and hear now the word of the Lord. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to to him, Feed my lambs. The grass withers and the flower uh, fades, but the word of our Lord endures forever. Amen and amen. Well, as we look at this verse, uh, there's a couple things we, we notice. First, the question. Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? The qu- a question that comes out of that is, who are the these? We know from uh, the previous passage that he was on the shore with the disciples. And by the disciples here, I'm referring to the 12, well, the 11, because Judas Iscariot is gone. He's on the shore with them, having just had breakfast, some fish that they had caught, uh, and he's talking with them. So it's not the masses, per se, but to the other disciples. What we can see in this is an indication that Peter, who we've already been told was going to be the rock upon which the church was built, was to take was to be in a leadership role. For he says, do you love me more than these? Now note, Peter doesn't answer the question directly. Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. So he gets to this, what he believes is the substance of the question, do you love me? And he doesn't answer that, that end part uh, more than these, that qualifier. Uh, maybe it's because he remembers back to the discussion when James and John were seeking the position uh, of the right hand, right and left hand of Jesus, that, that he's to be a servant, not to be at the front of the line, but to be at the back of the line. I, we don't know. But he simply says, Lord, you know that I love him. And then Jesus gives him the command, feed my lambs. And that's where I, I tie this into the leadership aspect of, uh, of Peter, in that his first command is to feed, to provide the word, to provide guidance, to provide the spiritual uh, mentoring and, and guidance and insight to those other men, to be uh, the spiritual f- father-brother for them. But the ultimate question, the, the base of this whole thing revolves around the question that he asks him initially. Simon, son of John, do you love me? And I wonder, and I want us to think about, how much do we love the Lord? Is our love for the Lord simply expressed in a word we say, in our, in our statement of faith, in, in uh, the verbalization of it? Or is it shown, as we've been looking at over the last few days, over the entirety of our life? Do we truly love the Lord with all of our heart, all of our mind, all of our soul, and all of our strength? And do we love our neighbors as ourselves? That is the all-encompassing view of our love for God. Is your love so strong and in such a way that you do indeed in your heart feel that you love him with everything that you have got, and thus more than than those around us? Not to be braggadocious or to exalt ourselves, but that my, your love, my love, is so fervent for the Lord that we don't, we don't even think about the fact that there might be others that love Him even more than we do. Because we so love the Lord, we will do whatever He says. For Peter, he says, feed my lambs, teach them, protect them, grow them, 
care for them. And that's what we are to be about as we labor each day for the sheep and the lambs around us to care for them in every possible way. Well, Samuel Ward in his sermons speaks about the question, do you love me more than these in, in, uh, in his sermons? And this is what he has to say. Consider all that Christ has done for you. Consider how he's forgiven you and conferred so many favors upon you. Is there anything too good, too hard, or too dear for him? Mary, if your tears might wash his feet, would you hesitate to pour them out? Is your hair too good to be his towel? Is there any spikenard too costly for his head? Joseph, the Lord will need of your tomb. Will you deny him? Zacchaeus, do you love your wealth above him who saved you? Stephen, do you love your life above your master? Do you dare to do anything that is displeasing to him? When you feel the pull of your heart towards sin, set your faith to work with all speed. Let it lay hold of God's power. It secretly empowers your heart with a pliable willingness and makes your will lamb-like. All that it does by laying hold of the effective cure of the death of Christ. The power of Christ's resurrection also transforms the heart of man and creates and infuses him with new principles of action. Trust in his power to mortify your flesh to sin and to make your spirit alive to holiness. Do you find a strong, inbred, habitual vice troubling you and keeping you prisoner against your will? Have you often resolved to forsake it but with failure? You must renounce the broken need of your own power. Place your trust in the grace of Christ. Be weak in yourself and strong in the Lord, and by faith be more than conqueror. Fall with Jacob to wrestle with Christ for a blessing. You will go limping away, but you shall be a prince with God and be delivered from Esau's bondage. If Satan has held position in some strong fort of your heart, persist in resisting, and he shall fall like lightning before you. Christ can overcome the most putrefied sores of sins. So do not despair. Through faith you can set your feet on their neck and triumph over them. Amen. And amen. Well, let's uh, close our time today in prayer. Let's go before our Lord in prayer. Almighty God and Father, we thank you that we can gather before your throne of grace to lift our hearts to you. We profess our love to you, O Lord, and today we want to demonstrate our love in every aspect of our life. I pray, O Lord, that you would be with each of us who are struggling with a besetting sin, one that we're wrestling with, getting rid of, that we would mortify it, put it to death, that we would be indeed overcomers, and that we would find our rest and our hope in the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. Oh God, be at work in us to make us your people for your glory. Be at work in us, O oh Lord, to, to uh, redeem our hearts and make us to be the people of God you desire us to be. Use us to build up your church for your glory and to proclaim your name wherever we may be. Father, thank you for being with us today. Impart your word into our lives. Give us faith, forgive us of our sins, and be glorified in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us today. I pray that uh, you've been encouraged by the word and that you can, will apply it to your hearts today. May God bless you, and we will see you tomorrow on Thoughts from the Word.